Welcome back, Mighty Vandals, the Tubs at the Club, the Idaho Vandals affiliate on the Big Sky Podcast Network. As sometimes always, I'm your host, Dallas Hammer, joined today by producer, we don't say that word anymore, Martin Heemstra. Martin, how's it going? It's going good. It's another another week, another show, another topic that I actually kind of watch practice for a lot, so I'm excited to talk about it. And uh, yeah. Last but not least, from beautiful Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, it's Brian Marceau. Brian, how are you doing? Well, I feel great because Kevin Reidenauer in the comment section uh, acknowledged us. Hey, credit where credit is due, even if it's to us. On time for once, yay for me. Uh, still five minutes behind schedule, but close enough. And we're already joined by multiple mayors in the comment section. Father Jason and our favorite, and I mean that, our favorite University of Idaho student, Rory Mayer. So it's a good day. Again, shots fired, Patty. Guys, let's let's just jump right into it. This is Around the Bar, Hughes River Expedition. We're going to talk about fun things all show because next show is probably not going to be like that, Brian. So with that very vaguely not vague let me specify it hey we should probably have the actual report to cover the volleyball report to cover the initial one uh covering chris gonzalez the what the other the other part of the investigation covering climate and culture that may uh the actual date on that is appears to be tbd but what dallas is getting at is we'll probably have actual reporting the actual document to be able to parse through next week, which uh, promises to not be particularly fun. We already covered the big fight news last week. So sandwiched in between two less fun episodes, we just want to exhale, kick back and talk about the good stuff with football progress. Dallas, take the wheel. I want to take the wheel and immediately drive it into Martin's lane, because as Martin said, guys, this was practice that he was looking for. He's excited about Martin. What group are we talking about today? Uh, uh, running backs and offensive line. Bingo. That's it, boys. We're talking offense. We've already gone over the quarterback. We know the situation there. Jack Lane taking over for Giovanni McCoy. But the bread and butter is what we're, we've got today. As Jason Mayer says in the comments, all caps, beef. Let's rip right into it, guys. Offensive line. Let's talk. We've got some key returners. We've got a couple guys that have left. What are what do we know about spring football? This offensive line. We know we've got Leighton Vining back. Charlie Vleem is back. Nate Azapardi's back. Aiden Knapik is back. That's four of the guys that played the majority of the snaps on the offensive line last year. Eli Sanchez, medical retirement, uh, played six games last year was a starter and then again unfortunately just injuries just took a toll isn't able to play football anymore and then Tagana Cisse he's unfortunately left he transferred to FBS Ohio he did see 11 games last year but again seemed like he was also dinged up a ton so the two guys that have left kind of injury prone what do we got Martin rip it off tell me what do we see in this offensive line so far at least I'll kind of say the first kind of uh starters that i've at least at the two practices i've been to so far the spring practices i've been to the offensive line has been rolling as jack foster at left tackle nate as a party at left guard binding at right at center whoops kada uh redshirt freshman or soon to be redshirt freshman caden robinette at right guard and charlie vleem at right tackle uh some of the notable second stringers, uh, the big one being Nathan Kanapik is rolling with the twos, I believe, at left tackle. Patrick, if you're in the comment section, want to double check me on that. But he's been – it's kind of just been – that's been the starting offensive line for practice. Obviously, Aiden is out right now, and there are still some incoming freshmen that are in – that are obviously not here right now as well. So it's not like you're probably going to see the full starters. You're gonna see, you might not see the full true depth at, on this team yet this spring, but they are looking a lot better so far. Martin, I got one more question for you before we let Brian jump in. He's been on the shelf a little bit. One thing you've been saying constantly uh, throughout all the, the practices you've gone to, the scrimmages you've seen, you've been telling us the depth is what is most noticeable about this offensive line. There is not quite the fall off like there was before. How how deep do you think this this runs? Is this is this going to be a fall of 
much better performance from the offensive line just because when a guy goes down, the guy stepping in for him can do 95% of the job? Uh, yeah, it's it's a lot of uh, – it's like the between the ones and twos, there's going to be, like you said, like probably that night – you probably get like 90 95% like the same production. There might be like the small like your mistake here or there, but there is a notice – like there's not the noticeable just – cliff dump cliff jive off it's more of the gentle glide but once you get past that there is you get to your true pressure where it is a little more the depth is a little more shaky but that's to be expected when you don't have a lot of experience playing d1 level brian your thoughts on the offensive line i mean the the word that i that i think of and i think the word that's going to have to be i guess like the, the thematic hook for the offensive line this year is, is development because of the, Hey, there's 22 O linemen on the roster. 14 are returners. All, all of the return, all the guys who did not return from last year, they're freshmen. So like this isn't a transfer portal um, bolster unit. Uh, if this unit's going to take a step forward, it's because individual players get better, uh, which, and, and the coaching staff, you know, through both strength and strength conditioning, Caleb Heim, and then Cody Booth himself, um, as the O-line coach, it's going to be that type of, honestly, in the transfer portal era, what feels like an old school uh, story that we don't, at least, you know, in some other sports, it feels like we don't get a feel, feel that story quite as much. But as you said, um, hey, a lot of returning, a lot of guys who returned who played meaningful snaps, both as starters and in reserve because of injuries. And one guy I want to pay a little bit extra attention to right now is Jack Foster at left tack who Martin said, Hey, you've been, he's been playing with the ones as left tap tackle. Um, that's Aiden Knappick's spot uh, or it has been his starting spot. And it was last year. Uh, Knappick has not been taking part in spring ball. If you guys remember, he, he got injured last game of the season against Albany uh, fingers crossed that by the start of the season, that's going to be a non-issue, but um, Jack Foster in an article uh, published just a couple days ago, by uh, Trevin Pixley was called out in a positive sense by Cody Booth, uh, again, O line coach, as having, as being what probably the most improved O lineman from last year, put on between 15 and 20 pounds uh, of, of muscle, well, not just muscle, but 50, he's 15, 20 pounds heavier from last year, meaning he's buying into the strength and conditioning plan. And he's just producing better. If you know, guys, you probably remember Knappick has been probably the best lineman for Idaho the last couple of years. He's going to be one of the oldest. I mean, he honestly, Knappick is essentially going to be one of the elder statesmen in the room uh, because there isn't a senior really on the not just the offensive line, just on the offense itself. And Patty Frakes in the comment section saying Jack Foster has lo has looked very good uh, in his time as a left tackle, and I bring that up of hey like brain dead connection here if knapic's back and healthy we we know he's strong if jack foster is taking a step well hey that's the depth that's that's how the o line that last year gave up the most sacks in the big sky that's how that that group is getting better and i i guess you know okay hold your breath see what happens in spring ball because in some of the early scrimmages just like in x first year the defense was looking like it's a step ahead of the offense not shocking in spring ball especially with the amount of guys dallas who are going to have new roles offensively um, but early returns trying to be cautiously optimistic if this team has individuals improve and we have depth i mean this is an area to put a star and continue to watch heading into into the actual season as if this group takes a step forward all the best the top teams the fcs the most competing for championships they're strong on the o-line strong on the d-line we know idaho's d-line is is pretty good this is the unit i think that is going to really dictate what happens with idaho so i'm going to watch and just hope and hope that development that we're seeing now continues persists into the actual season Yeah, Brian, the the big thing for me is is just going to see the again that depth and and how things are going to to just progress uh as as the season goes. Um we've heard again Jack Foster has has put on some pounds. He's he's listed at 67290 on the spring roster. He was listed at 67280 in 2023. Uh Charlie Vleem was listed at 68285. He's listed now uh again as larger as well. He's 68290. 
We've also heard that he has also taken massive steps forward. So you, when you look at the offensive line returning, you have, again, four starters from last year that are returning. But then you have, again, Nathan Kanapik coming in. You saw what Aiden did his his freshman year. I know Nathan is a true freshman playing in, or you know, I mean, he graduated early to come be in spring ball and and get those extra reps and get into the program quicker. You, I mean, again, just based off of genetics, expect he's probably a guy that could could step in and play as well as Aiden did his freshman year. And then if if you're seeing guys like Jack Foster taking these leaps to where, hey, they're they're playing with the ones in spring. Yes, it's spring ball, but you don't have that that drop off before this is the honestly this is the linchpin to to everything we've talked about it for for a very long time uh, Pat, patty frakes continuing to drop things in the comment section uh, offensive line probably not top in the fcs quite yet but the pieces are there they're getting better and better charlie Vreem, charlie vleem has stood out to me he looks like he's taken a massive step forward they're all still very young brian you alluded to it again as a party redshirt junior Knappic, true junior uh, Logan Harris, redshirt junior, and then everybody else is a level of sophomore or freshman. So this is a very young team that's going to get better as the season goes. And 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 again, that depth is hopefully going to mean that there won't be some falling off. But for me, this is this is the the key to the linchpin. We've talked about this for years now. X team was going to build a line that was going to change this offense. Um and, and man, this this feels like the, the perfect timing. Giovanni McCoy is gone. He's now at Oregon State. Jack Lane is now presumably the quarterback moving forward. From what we've seen from Jack, he stands in the pocket a little bit more, does a little bit better job going through progressions rather than, again, not a knock on Giovanni, but it was one, two, was Hayden, Jackson, eh, screw it, get out of the pocket and run. And a lot of times that's what he had to do because, again, the, the line was collapsing, pressure was hitting him. He was he was having to keep things alive with his feet. If the offensive line is going to be able to buy a little bit more time in the pocket for the quarterback, this is, I mean, this, we're going to see massive steps forward with this offense if that happens. Uh, again, just giving a guy like Jack Lane a little bit more time to, again, dissect the defense. And, uh, I mean, football's a pretty simple game, guys. You throw it where they're not. He's able to read the defense, find the open spot, and hit the open guy. We're not going to see what we saw at the end of last year, which was, hey, that offensive production just really went up and down and got very, very hit or miss, depending on the personnel that was in or the injury status of, again, one running back or one offensive lineman going down. Things would start to fall apart, and again, that, that defense was really heavily relied on. And while defense does win championships, uh, seeing that in the comments from Captain 58, that is very true. I, I do, man, I feel so good about just knowing X background as an offensive line coach, an offensive line guru. You've seen what South Dakota State's offensive line has looked like from, again, he's the guy that put that together. Man, it, it really feels like we are entering that championship window for Idaho, where if this offensive line takes off the way we, again, we expect a guy from Wisconsin to be coaching an offensive lineup, man, this is this is the start of, of Idaho having some really, really, really powerful teams at this level of football. No, and hey, worth noting, one of the kind of prized freshman recruits, O-lineman Son Faliallo from Anchorage, Alaska, listed at 6'6", 290 pounds. He's not, he's still in high school. He's not, he's not there yet. He, he did not graduate early. So there are guys who could contribute who still are not yet on campus. Uh, some guys who have athleticism and size that, completely could justify some playing time. Uh, but what I, I guess what I want to, to point out to Dallas is look, when Jason Eck first came here, if you listen to old interviews and he, I remember talking to him about this too, at the media day I went to a couple of years ago, FCSO linemen don't usually come in as true freshmen ready to be all league level talents or not true fresh. There's not a bunch of true freshmen, based O lines at like South Dakota state, North Dakota state, Montana state. It's guys have to develop. You don't go, come to the FCS as, as an O lineman because you're four stars. So it's just going to take time. This is one of the position one. You just have to have the entire, the unit itself needs to be strong. It's not just like having a quarterback who's ready to go. You got to have, you know, you have to have what you're, you're five. You have to have those five starters and you want depth there. So you're needing, you know, eight, nine-ish, something like that. You talk about injuries, hopefully even more guys who are ready to contribute. This is the part of the team 
that should have taken the longest to take a step up. But we're also hitting year three where X been able to keep a lot of guys. Again, the sexy positions, guys have left. Offensive line, that has not really been the case, minus Tagana Cisse, and I'm okay with you know with that departure. We should start to see some more fruits of the work X been putting in recruiting wise, coaching wise, and then bring the coaching part up because Idaho spring football also has the O-line uniquely kind of a pretty cool setup where Cody Booth is the O-line coach, but he has, he has an assistant working under him for the spring football. You guys might've heard of him, Mike Eupati. Um, He had been a volunteer coach at college of Idaho. College of Idaho did pretty damn good this last year, lost in the NAIA semifinals. So, hey, that, that sounds okay. Uh, Iupati looks like he is now taking the taking the complete step, getting into coaching at the collegiate, uh, well, coaching football at the collegiate or professional level. He's starting as a volunteer for Idaho. And the benefit, Jason X quoted in the Coeur d'Alene Press saying, hey, having Mike here, never mind his background, his instant credibility, never mind the, the fact that he is one of the most, you know, probably the best pro vandal in quite a while. He gives the he gives the team two coaches that lets them split the O line into two units. So more guys are getting reps, more guys are getting the kind of feedback, the the kind of the kind of one the kind of response in in practice that could help explain extra developmental steps. So hey, huge thanks to that Mike Upati can do this. Um, Upati's next step after this is a Bill Walsh um, diversity internship at with. Um, the Los Angeles Chargers working under Jim Harbaugh. Harbaugh was a, a coach who Mike Upati played under at San Francisco. Uh, but hey, bring up Upati because not only is this a kick-ass story of Vandal giving back to Idaho, but man, this it's very easy when we when we talk when we have our shows and we talk about what's expected of this team and when we react to the actual games that there are certain positions you focus on. These are the guys. This is the most important. But to me, this is the most important area of Idaho football that we're all hoping for. Uh, we're all obviously we're going to have to see the games before we see the progress, before we know for a fact there's progress. But there's every reason to believe that depth is going to be much better this year. And we're going to start to see the type of O-line that we've all been hoping Eck can develop. It just takes time. But we're in year three. So we're approaching the time that because we know the coaching has been sound, the recruitment's been sound, the continuity has been there there's re- there's reason to believe we're going to see this next step. Yeah. Patty Frakes in the comment section again, the depth is there for sure. I think the guards might be the weakest leak in, link right now in terms of the starters, but also they are playing against a really good group of, of DTs at practice. And I think that's something that you have to point out as well. Like the, the defensive line that they're going up against, we've already talked about is, is most likely going to be the strength of this team. You're going up against a, a again, a very high quality defensive line week in and week out. It's a great way for these guys to continue to improve, continue to get better. And I mean, like you said, Brian, there's a two-time All-Pro and four-time Pro Bowler helping out at practice. Like, if if you can't learn something from football from that guy, I I, I don't think you're trying. Uh, what a what a huge benefit that is to have again the best pro vandal in a very very long time. Again, I I don't know the next time Idaho is going to have a first round draft pick here. Uh, Unfortunately for me personally, played for all of the teams in the NFC West that aren't mine. Uh, but you know, again, one of one of the best Vandals that will ever play at this school is, is coming back around to help help teach the offensive line, which was one of the weaker points of, of this program. And again, now you've got Jason Eck, former Big Ten offensive lineman, and Mike Ayupati, NFL All Pro, helping helping coach out with Booth. I mean, that's that's huge. This is, this is very exciting guys. Uh, the one thing that we're not, we're not talking tight ends today, but uh, the one thing that I think is also going to help, uh, the offensive line is that I think we're going to see a lot more 12 personnel. Uh, we'll, we'll get into tight ends on another episode, but for, for those who don't know, 12 personnel is one running back, two tight ends. Cause there's, there's a whole lot of tight ends on this roster. We haven't seen a whole lot of tight end pr- production or performance the last couple years because, Again, you had three different receivers that were all big sky guys. You typically tried to get them on the field. I know Therese was hurt a lot, uh, but there was a lot of, again, a lot of 11 personnel, one running back, one tight end. 
three running or three receivers out there. You've only got the one tight end in. Now we're going to see a lot more of that two tight end set, which again, you typically have a guy in there blocking. That's going to help out that offensive line even more, Brian and Martin. Any any thoughts left <laughs> on the offensive line, guys? Well, I just want to reference tight ends for like one more second because you're right. We'll, we'll talk about tight ends separately, but to buttress your point about tight end usage last year, I mean, hey, we know Alex Moore was a guy that Eck was high on because he started as a true freshman against Washington State in game one, blew his knee. Well, the early return, the returns are he's been playing a lot more with the ones, meaning he's looking healthier. So that's it. More, more talent there, both as a pass catcher. We've seen Alex Moore be a talented pass catcher, but should be stronger blocking too. Martin, any thoughts on the, the, the heavies before we, we pivot? No, it's just, I think they'll, they look a lot better this year and I'm excited to see them this fall when they play against, when they play against Oregon and Wyoming and Albany this for at a conference. Yeah. Big, big test coming up uh, with the, the former PAC 12 current big 10 organ uh, as the first game for some of these guys going to be uh, again, test the metal real quick and early before again, getting a playoff opponent in Albany quickly after that, before we get into the running backs, gentlemen, I think it's time to talk about a great all inclusive week long vacation that you could have right here in your backyard. Hughes River Expeditions has been vandal owned and operated since 1976, and they're ready to take you on the vacation of a lifetime. Enjoy a multi-day trip down the middle fork of the Salmon, the main Salmon River of no return, the Salmon River Canyons, or even the Selway. You could check out special trips like one to see the Persed Meteor Shower, camp on pristine beaches, run amazing whitewater, hike scenic trails, spot wildlife, soak in the beautiful natural hot springs, and guys, you should know this by now, fish the most remote stretches of river in the entire usa just bring your clothes let colin and hre handle the rest grab a paddle catch dinner and ride the bull all throughout the gem state call them now at 406-540-4450 or check them out at hughesriver.com i hit in the comment section again real quick patty frakes the unofficial fourth member of tubs hashtag vandal student patty uh more has been more of a y on ball tight end Plays a lot more of the pass catcher role. Cox is a lot more of the F, the off-ball tight end that they use in motion and blocking schemes. Both are on the field a lot. Again, guys, that's what I'm saying. I think we're going to see a lot more of those two tight end sets. It's what, again, it's what they were running at South Dakota State for a very long time. That's why they've put tight ends into the NFL. Again, I mean, Dallas Goddard is one of the best tight ends in the NFL. It, it was always natural that we were going to see this here because, again, there's, what, 11 tight ends on the roster with four incoming true freshmen. So this is, this is what we're going to see. The investment up front, you win the we win the game with the line battle in the trenches. That's what we're going to see. So, with that said, how do you replace Anthony Woods? Well, a lot of it is going to be by those guys in the trenches. But Brian, Mister Stats over here, did our did the research? Ninety two percent of Idaho's rushing yards in twenty twenty three graduated or transferred out, including all four of the top rushers. So, gentlemen. What are we going to see from the running back room? Well, this is where Martin having eyes in, um, in practice helps a ton. And if you are, hey, if you're a listener and you, you want more updates than you're just getting here, Martin posts the, those in our Discord, the hashtag only tub Discord, patreon.com backslash tubs at the club. Costs less than a cup of coffee. Unless you, unless you, you want to pay more than a cup of coffee, we're 100% game. We do not turn money down unless you're one person. But Martin's been giving updates on scrimmages. So I guess, hey, Martin, I want to throw a few questions to you. We know that right now we have the, the, the composition of who gets rushing yards is going to be radically different. And we also just talk about it for one second. We know there's probably going to be some more production from running backs as pass catchers this year, just because hey, Jason Eck referenced it on his uh Vandal's weekly episode with Coulter Nuanez. Just the way Jack Lane's going to beat blitzes is not going to be running around them like Giovanni McCoy tried to do. It's going to be identifying where the blitz is coming from and hitting the short passes right away. So, hey, we, we know that's going to matter too. But you've been in practice. The big name that everyone in the Vandal world's probably going to be familiar with and maybe most curious about is Eli Cummins is back. And he looks to be a committee that's 
a committee of three right now that's going to be splitting the one role, at least based off what we've, you've seen in spring ball, Martin. So talk about Eli Cummins for a second. If you're, if you watched yeah. in 2022, you guys know how he plays, but if you don't remember solid pass catcher, he's a strong, small, strong dude, but he's fast. Uh, he's not just a battering ram up the middle. He can beat guys to the outside as well. From what you've seen out of Eli Cummins in the spring so far, Martin, because he took, he was, uh, he was a red shirt last year. Didn't see the field for one snap. How's he looking? He, he looks a lot faster that he looks, he just, he seems quicker granted it is practice, but they, he just looks a lot. He he's faster. He's a lot more muscles. As Jason Myers says, hash equal Eli equals bubble abs. He, the dude just looks like 95% muscle at this point, but I don't know for sure what he is, but it, it he just, he's a lot more. He looks just a lot leaner, which is kind of impressive to say, given what he was like in 2022, well, yeah, hey, and his stats, 2022, 91 carries for 442 yards, four rushing touchdowns, 14 catches, 137 yards, and two touchdowns he produced. But, hey, I'm part of why I was asking you that, too, is, look, hey, we know the, the story of Eli Cummins has been a little bit up and down. Uh, you know, was off the roster at the end of the 2022 season, back on, then redshirted. But in that time that he wasn't playing, just based on what you described, he clearly took care of himself, which is great news. The guy misses a year. That's always question number one. Are they going to be ready to play? You're telling me he's popping a little bit more than he had before. So Cummins for sure is ready to play. There is there is a transfer in the running back room that's probably going to contribute. Dallas, I'll let you uh, talk about the transfer impact, and then we can jump back to Martin because he's seen more on the field than you or I have. Yeah, so Nate Thomas, we talked about him a little bit during the recruiting episodes. The transfer from South Dakota, he's had a really interesting career. Uh, 2021, he was one of their main guys. 114 carries, 717 yards, five touchdowns, averaged 6.3 yards a carry, looked like he was going to be a stud, and then unfortunately had an awful knee injury, missed all of 2022, uh, was Again, also dinged up in some 2023, ended up falling down the depth chart as South Dakota's had some some changes over and went from being a honestly a pretty terrible team to a considerably better squad. Uh, last year, only 64 carries, but he still had 398 yards, five touchdowns, averaged over six yards a carry again, and is now transferred into Idaho as a redshirt junior. He is the only real addition to this squad other than the, the freshman. Uh, the running back room, guys, is, again, there's Eli Cummings. We're going to talk about a couple other names here. Nate Thomas is really the only new addition that came from, from the portal. Uh, this is not, again, we see Anthony Woods is gone. Anthony Woods gone to the Pac-12 slash Big 12 slash whatever Utah is going to be in the next couple of years. They didn't go out and find, I mean, again, Nate Thomas came in, but like you said, Eli Cummings looks like he's probably going to be the head of the rotation. It's not going to be this, hey, Romano's going to go in every once in a while. And yes, we had the Romano Renaissance, but it, it wasn't quite the same as watching Anthony Woods out there. I don't think we're going to see that a whole lot this year. I think Nate Thomas looks really good. If you go look up his highlights, I mean, man, oh, he is, he is so much fun. Uh, in the comment section, Taylor Cash, Thomas is going to break some big runs very fast for a power back. Patty Frakes, he's a bowling ball that's surprisingly quick for his size. And Jason Mayer with my favorite. Raleigh Lambala slash D Joel Thomas type of back. I think again, you got you're smashing your dash here. I think those two are probably going to be the guys. But again, we've also got other guys on this roster that are probably going to make it a little bit of an impact as well. I don't expect this to be the the Woods Romano and three carries for the rest of the team type of role. So Martin, when you've seen Thomas Nate Thomas in scrimmage, what have you seen? He's obviously not as fast as Eli Cummings. He's a little. He's a lot more shifty he's a lot kind of like what uh patrick's saying he's he's definitely gonna break some big runs a lot more powerful than eli he's uh he i'm trying to say I'm losing my train of thought right now he's the perfect kind of accompanying piece to eli cummings it that it's all i really can say about it without repeating myself well that well you're you what you described also, similar to what Patty Frakes saying in the comment section about Nate Thomas, a uh, bowling ball that is surprisingly quick for his size. So like Dallas said, hey, he's going to be the power back, but he it's it's not. He probably has a little bit more. He's a little bit more shifty than let's say um, 
Rashawn Johnson was a couple of years ago for Idaho. And one thing I want to point out Dallas with Nate Thomas, cause Hey, like a running back blows out his knee. It's a, it's a huge deal uh, to whether the person actually gets back to that 100%. And with Nate Thomas last year, you, you hit the stats of just under 400 yards, but his yards per carry was essentially identical last year to what he was as a freshman. So just at the production level, that's a box checked of, okay, he's probably going to be okay. Like he's probably ready. And then what Martin and both what Patty are saying is in practice, the guy for sure is strong, but you're still seeing some moves. You're still seeing some explosion out of the guy that lets me know we're probably not, uh, this guy is probably is ready to go. He's probably ready to be a big sky level contributor. If since he's already done it in the Missouri Valley football conference, the third guy, who has had some more reps with the ones has been day day Buchanan. Who's a redshirt freshman. Didn't see the field last year, Martin, how would you describe, and you will be in some ways breaking news to listeners because as a redshirt freshman, Buchanan didn't see that four game action, then sit out. Buchanan did not see the field last season. When you've seen day day Buchanan, how would you describe him as a running back? I'd say a little more closer to, I, a little more close, kind of the middle ground between, oh gosh, Nate Thomas and Eli Cummings. I don't know why I forgot their names automatically. It's a, uh, that's kind of where I'm, I kind of see him. He's a lot more, not as fast as Eli, but definitely not as powerful as Nate Thomas is kind of the best way I think to describe him. So guys, one thing we haven't gotten too much into it. There've been a couple comments in the, in, uh, here so patty frake saying uh about cummings more of a gadget back beats his guys with finesse speedy guy that's really good out of the backfield pairs perfectly with lane and the captain 58 row was a very north south guy cummings was a big pass catcher in 22 could be a great outlet for lane this year again this is this to me is the evolution of the vandal offense into what coach eck has wanted um i think we've all been enamored with with coach eck and the exciting brand of football that he's put out the last couple of years but Again, he inherited a bunch of Petrino guys. Yes, he did a great job bringing in Anthony Woods out of, hey, we think we think Rose going to be the guy, and then Woods steps in as a true freshman and is an all conference guy immediately. Yeah, there's been some of that, but it, inherently he 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 got a roster from Paul Petrino and he adapted his system to make it work. Now we're going to see a lot more of that. Again, two receivers, two tight ends. What we're going to end up seeing, I think, is a lot more of that Eli Cummings receiving things out of the backfield, just as the checkdowns. Taylor Cash in the comment section, lots of checkdowns in the scrimmage to stay ahead of the chains. That's, I think, what we're going to see a lot more of is that, hey, check it down. Take those free four yards. If it's first and 10 and you've got four yards, take it and battle again another day. I don't think we're going to see as many second and longs, third and longs as Idaho sometimes got into a little bit last year. I think we're going to see a lot more pass production out of the running back room. Again, I don't know if we're going to see an Anthony Woods pop off for a thousand yards type of guy, but I, I would expect to see Eli Cummings is probably going to have some decent receiving numbers just based on the fact that this is what the offense is going to shift into. It's a little bit more of that check down style I, offense. I can't wait to see the first Eli Cummings wheel road. That is going to maybe hit like something I'm not allowed to say on this show. Martin, you're allowed to say whatever you want on the show. Oh, I can't wait. We're just all being silly gooses today. <laughs> well, Dallas, one of the things you're, we're talking about with running backs, we we brought up this topic with the O-line too. So the look, Colter Nuanas is one of the FCS voices I listen to during the football season. For the most part, there's there's not a ton of other FCS voices outside of like Grizz fan that I pay much that I listen to that much. And uh, what Coulter described Idaho has a lot last season was uh, depth was not the Idaho strength. The strength was some of the best individual performers offensively, which is why outside of University of Idaho circles, there was panic when guys like Hayden Hatton declared for the draft, when guys like Anthony Woods transfers out, when guys like Giovanni McCoy transfer out. For those who are in the know about University of Idaho, like we weren't anxious about that whatsoever because what I think we're going to see this year is instead of Idaho being uh, top-heavy, talented on the offensive end, I think what we're going to see is more varied production. 
we're going to see more guys getting meaningful reps and more guys having, you know, putting their stamp on individual games and Hey, point to the running back room as what we're seeing right now is like, Hey, as exhibit a of where we can see where this Vandal team will look different from last year, but completely justifies this far out, not being at all anxious about replacing the production of Anthony Woods, who was a very good guy who Idaho needed a guy like him uh, to have the season Idaho had last year. But as the O-line gets stronger, which we talked about as the O-line has more depth, we're not going to, Idaho's not going to be as reliant. I don't think on needing a guy who can break a couple tackles to get to those yards and also having a quarterback who's probably, who's more comfortable hitting that check down Dallas, that that you, that you talked about. That's part of how this offense begins to take steps that just weren't there last season. And exactly why I don't think Vandal should not be anxious at all to me about the, replacing those big sexy names. In fact, hey, call me zero percent. I mean, zero percent concerned that the running back room is going to produce worse this season than in 2023, despite losing probably best running back in the league. We've got some. We have some guys who've contributed in Idaho and guys who've contributed elsewhere in the FCS. And with what you you already alluded to earlier with hey, different formations, different plays, a quarterback who's probably going to be better at hitting more guys. I'm pretty damn excited to see this crew in action. Yeah, uh, you know, pardon my French, but uh, you know, fuck it, Hatton's down there somewhere. That that was a, an absolutely a working offense. Uh, again, one of the greatest vandals that's ever going to come through here. But I, do, I just don't see Jordan Dwyer having a, you know, 1500 yard, 14 touchdown season, because I, I do think that this offense is going to be so much more diverse in the fact that it's, it's not going to be every throw is at one guy or two guys. And one running back is going to get 80% of the carries because he's that much better than everyone. I do think, I do think we're going to see a lot more of that just distributed production. It's going to make things much more dynamic. It's going to make things much more consistent. And man, I'm just, I'm very excited to see what's going to happen. And again, as Kevin Marshall said in the comment section a little bit earlier, the, the, there's still a transfer session to go through here. Like there will probably be some changes in the summer. We don't know what the roster is fully going to look like. Um, even again, guys like Carlos Matheny and Art Williams, they didn't play a ton last year. Uh, I think Matheny had 15 carries. Uh, Williams had eight or 10, not a ton of carries for those guys. They, I think they've fallen down the order, but again, Giovanni McCoy two years ago was the number four quarterback on the roster. And uh, I, mean, I think he's even lower than that at one point. And by again, end of the spring, he's starting. And then he's the Jerry Rice guy. You know, there, there's definitely a chance for things to change here. And for again, a guy like maybe day, day Buchanan explodes and it's, Oh yeah, that, well, that's, that guy's going to get 90% of the carries. But right now with what we're seeing, it feels like this is just going to be a much more balanced offensive attack. That isn't going to rely Brian, like you said on, you got to have, Again, two all-conference receivers, an all-conference quarterback, and an all-conference running back carrying the load on their shoulders. And if one of those pieces falls apart, the offense starts to struggle and there are hitches. I don't think we're going to see that this year. It, it, and it's it's a very exciting time to be a Vandal, uh, having this much confidence and and belief that hey, this is a team that's. This is a team that's going to win. They're just going to do it. It's not going to be – Jack Lane's not going to have to hoist this team on his back to be able to win like we saw for, honestly, decades where it felt like you had to have a guy go out there and throw for five touchdowns or there was no chance. I don't think it's going to be this team this year. Like Patty Frake says, uh, to, to sum up my point much, much more succinctly than I did, a lot less big plays but way more five to seven yarders. That's exactly what I'm looking for. I'd Hey, one-yard run incomplete pass 13 yard pass that's great but hey, if you can keep things consistently moving that's how you kill teams well no i, I think that we're looking at is in year three of jason eck with uh we, we know there's four new coaches who we we previously talked about there there's some new blood in the coaching staff but with in year three we should be starting to see the team just take on more and more of the dna of the guy of a guy recruiting and running practices and what you're describing to me based off what we've seen what idaho does when they can anyway milk on that clock jason eck this is what eck wants he wants a team that can pr consistently drive annihilate the clock and then force other teams to think they have to be 
incredible, incredibly efficient offensively to hang. I mean, we've, we've already seen what X, what X done the last couple the, in year one and year two, I guess the, the thing that I, this far out is one, now that we're talking about the off on offense that should take a developmental step because Hey, in 2023 over for the second half of the season, the defense was what Idaho truly hung its hat on. This team takes a step offensively. Uh, man, I'm starting to have to talk to myself about how to make sure my expectations aren't out of whack. When we start the year, look, we're not talking about schedule on purpose yet, but. Oh, I will get everybody's as expectations out of whack when we do predictions i've already told it what i'm going to say in the in the dms and it'll be a surprise martin is extra excited see what i did there double pun bingo hey to put it succinctly in year three we should see this team looking more like the head guy and it's exact jason eck has been direct ever since he showed up in idaho he wants to develop the team wants to build through the trenches. What, like you talked about Dallas, look at what South Dakota state did when he'd been there for a while on the offensive side of the ball. That's the evolution he's taken this team in. And I think early returns in spring ball are clearly those are the steps this team's making. And if you're a vandal, you should be ecstatic about that. Eck static about that, Brian, get it right. But yes, uh, guys, I, I, again, we have we have talked for years now about the projections and and trajectory of of the Jason Eck era at Idaho and I mean he's he's said it himself don't really know that winning playoff games was was necessarily the goal or the expectation two years in but we've already seen Idaho again get a high seed two home games yes it didn't quite go the way we wanted it to but I, I, it's it's a weird time to be a vandal again. It's the first time since the '90s that they've won back to back games, and now or have won back to back games, had back to back winning seasons, and now here we are going into year three of Jason Eck, like talking about legitimately this could be a like we're on national title trajectory here, and and it's not asinine to be talking about that, and I don't think that we I don't think we take enough of that in because it just happened so fast but think of where we were three years ago guys this was not this wasn't a program that anybody had any real dog in the fight for Fire it, Zach Claus! yes thank you jesus christ uh, yes uh <laughs> that was exactly what we thought about the previous coach because we had seen again hey this drop down to the big sky yes i don't want to relitigate fbs fcs here but the thing that people tried to hang the hat on was hey look if they dropped down to the FCS, they should get good. Well, they didn't get good. They got bad and continued to be bad. And Jason Eck turned this thing around to the point that we're we're talking about, again, national titles here. Without, I don't know if it's fully sunk in yet. Like, guys, if, if Jason X here for a while, this is like, this is approaching that Montana, Dakota's territory of, this could just be a good team year in and year out. And I don't know if I'm ready for that. No, the, the hype at the start of this season is going to be wild. Uh, well, actually, I, I maybe let me take that back. I don't know if it's going to be wild outside of Vandal football because I think the Big Sky national landscape and a lot of the big, honestly, a lot of the Big Sky coverage that isn't Idaho centric is I, I, I think they're going to be freaked out about Idaho having to replace the the names Idaho's replacing. Um, I don't, and honestly, that hey, I, that might be a good thing that Idaho is not immediately a top four team or something like that might be good. might be good for Idaho to, you know, have a, have a little bit of chip on his shoulder, have a little bit of, you know, feeling like they're the underdogs because this is a pretty, this is a pretty good team. Um, But I guess, Hey Dallas, we were, we've talked about the two position groups. We, we have a few more minutes before we're going to call it a show. Um, I want to, I want to throw you this question this far away you missed so are you going to be at the the spring game on april 26 i am not going to be at the spring game this year once again jesus christ yeah torpedoed that question i was gonna have but i guess for you like you're hey, you referenced the background of of idaho football your um your freudian slip of two wins 
well, it's that there's, it's not for no reason that that's the Freudian slip that you just landed on. I guess this far out and try to, you know, try to keep the focus and maybe a little more narrow to O-line and, and running backs. What do you do to try to really stay dialed in on enjoying what we have right now? Man, honestly, the last couple seasons trying to like dial in and like, and think about like, wow, like I've spent almost my entire life with Idaho being putrid, putrid at football. Uh, again, there's been, you know, a couple of those bowl years, but I have lived through the entire FBS era. I don't remember much of the, the FCS era before that, or, you know, the one double era before that, because I just wasn't alive for me. It's been watching the the offensive line as as funny as that is it's been watching the offensive line that is kind of what keeps me like grounded in this of like okay this team is still is still winning this team is is still like again playoffs to the each of the last two years watching again what was i don't mean to take shots here but what was probably the weakest of the position groups the last two years yeah you're saying relative to a team finishing in the top eight the o-line was not like it wasn't what montana state has no, was not a you know was not a championship caliber offensive line. It was not not one that could cont- continuously and consistently week in and week out fight against the Montanas, the North Dakota states, the South Dakota states. Seeing that has kept me in it a little bit of like, oh man, when this when this turns around, that like this is this is not something that we're used to seeing and this group over here that's this, again is is not quite to championship aspirations yet when this gets there like this is this is it like when this group is here the rest of this roster is is pretty built and and it's it's time to like it's time to have my hopes being national championship or again season wasn't necessarily a huge success right now it's been hey I've been able to kind of watch that line and say, Hey, you know, okay. Yeah. They're not going to win a title this year, but it helps really remind me like, man, even with, again, this offensive line that is so young and and has all this growth to, to happen that we're finally seeing come around. Even with that, this team was winning games. This team was a bunch of fun. And before it, man, the, like the Petrino era, it just, it always felt like, man, we can't get the quarterback, right? Some of the skill positions are, are not quite there. The, again, the Bresky cushion of death. Like it was just like, man, throw a pin on a dartboard and you've got all these complaints about each position group uh, as that has changed with the Eck era. And it's become, well, the offensive line's young and kind of small and inexperienced. Like that, that's our weakness instead of what we had seen for years of, man, once every 10 years, Idaho puts together a season where they win more games than they lose. It, it, it's, it's so much different than that now. Yeah, hey Kevin Marshall in the comments section. He hosts uh, the the what I think is the best national FCS show, FCS Nation Radio. Um, he's a he's in the comments section saying he p- pending portal departures. He thinks Idaho begins in the eleven to twelve range preseason, which you know, hey, um, I'm okay with that. Um, I think outsiders can if you're not really dialed in with the Idaho roster you have every reason to believe there's, there might be a, a step back. Um, Kevin, I hope you're right that that's around where Idaho is because I want Idaho to be high enough that winning games in the regular season really does push you up towards, you know, top four area. But I, I don't, I will be quite happy for Idaho to also be low enough that the team and the athletes can see the number and think, Oh, fuck that. We're, we're better. We're better than that. Um, I, I want the chip on the shoulder which this look in, in the act time we have, one of the things we have not seen is really underperformance for the, and even when it's underperformance, it's been for like a quarter, then they beat the hell out of Northern Colorado. So we haven't really seen underperformance as part of the act team, which again, I give credit to the athletes because they're the ones who do it. Give credit to the coaching staff because clearly it's clearly both those things uh, that make a team like Idaho. That is, that's shown up. I like it as for two solid years. Um, Again, man, just as far away. The, the O-line is really, it, oh, man, just put a star by the O-line as the thing that I, I think people should be paying the most attention to. If that that unit's able to take a step, that's huge. Because like 
what I what Idaho was able to do last year, Dallas, you're 100 right. It it was hard to talk about last year's offensive line because it was a very good Idaho team, and we didn't we we didn't want to talk sound like we were shitting on the O line. But you, hey, you're right. That was a uh, Idaho finished eight. That's if you, if that's not nationally elite, you call that nationally very good. And it was starting an undersized O line that clearly was taking some lumps, but but getting better. You're like, hey, Abe Christensen was a converted D lineman who had to start on the offensive line. That's just not happening at Montana state. That's just not happening at South Dakota state. So that's man, I guess what I, what I'm taking a long time to say is if this, this group takes that developmental step, that's a huge deal. And this, this unit takes that developmental step. It's going to give a lot of other guys some, a lot of guys are going to get some highlight plays and pretty quickly. We're never going to forget Hayden Hatton loved his time as a Vandal. We're never going to forget Jermaine Jackson loves his time as a Vandal. We're never going to forget some of those plays of Anthony Woods, but this little line takes a step forward. We're going to be, we're going to be stoked to usher in the new era of Vandal stars on um, that skill position. Yeah. And I mean, to, to just to put a, a bow on again, this is the offensive line show that's why I'm not as concerned that again, you have to replace a Jerry race award winner at quarterback. You have to replace all these all conference guys at receiver and running back. When the offensive line has improved, those individual performances don't matter as much. Like, yes, obviously I would love to have Hayden Hatton and Anthony Woods back this year and Jermaine Jackson. Like it'd be phenomenal to have all these guys back here for another year, but when the offensive line has, is taking the steps that again that we're, we we believe we're seeing here in the spring, that that goes unnoticed. Those guys are not going to get the credit that they probably deserve because as they take those steps forward, it takes some of that pressure off of guys like Jack Lane. He's again, if he's got a little bit more time to throw than Vonnie had the last couple of years, naturally he's going to have more time to make the correct decision, and it's going to make him look better. Same thing with Eli Cummings. If again, if there's a little bit bigger, bigger hole and it's, Hey, wow. Cummings sat out for a year and he looks great two years. You know, it's been two years since he played and wow. He's he, doing almost everything. Anthony Woods did a lot of that is going to be helped by the fact that again, the hog Molly's got bigger and better and, and it, man, it just, it's going to, it's going to keep this, this team in such a, ah, oh, I cannot wait for the fall guys. It, it, I'm so excited for Vandal football. I think this offense is going to be something special. Patty Frakes in the comment section. Also, a lot less pressure to make sure the stars get their targets as well. That's also the other thing that's going to happen. I mean, you don't have Hayden Hatton that hey, you would love to get this guy into the NFL. Let's again feed him his feed him the ball because he obviously deserves it. He's making plays all over the place. Not going to have to do that quite as much. Man, it's just going to be be a hell of a season. Well, and hey, most teams do not get, and I'm not talking about University of Idaho historic. Most teams don't have a big sky, an all conference historic level performer at receiver year in, year out to really lean on. And hey, I'm talking South Dakota State too, who just, hey, they just won a championship. Like, look, I know they, they have a just a ton of talent, but to win it, to, to succeed at that level, that you know jason x move in idaho toward you just need we just need that strong offensive line so we don't need historic level performances we can just have good performances that become great that's all and that i guess that's the thing that i, I that i was trying to stress earlier you stressed it in different ways we're going to see di- we're this team's going to have different type of production distribution and that's a fantastic thing With that, guys, any final thoughts on the running backs or the offensive line? Martin, I'll let you take the wheel. The other name I do kind of want to give a quick shout out that was kind of getting some reps with twos sprinkled in. I've done more threes, but a lot of some twos here and there was uh, Carlos Matheny. He's another bowling ball type running back that will might be able to get some playing time. I know it's going to probably be Eli Nate with some day day sprinkled in there, but uh, just Carlos Matheny is another name to I think. Bandle fans should at least get to know a little bit more just because of how like he's might be a guy like in a year or two might be like hard to bring down. He he's a more of the physical side physical back than speed. Yeah, very good uh, point on that, Martin. I part yeah. of the same class as Day Day, and we talked about that on that recruiting show. Those were the guys that looked like again 
to say smash and dash again those looked like hey those could be the future of smash and dash again it makes sense that day day and Matheny are probably the two guys behind cummings and thomas Brian, any final thoughts on the offensive line and the running backs? Uh, less on the O-line and running backs and more just, hey, we're recording on April 10th. The spring football game is April 26th. We have pretty much two more weeks left of spring football before the time of the year that I never look forward to, that desert in between football and basketball being truly done with. And, you know, no real football stuff other than just transfer portal news until into the summer. So, again, hey, we uh, page on our discord. There's a lot of reporting on what's going on in practice that doesn't reach print. Uh, still follow Shreve Talks on Twitter. Read his stuff. He's, he's doing a kick ass job as well. But if you want more in more like a real nitty gritty type of stuff from practice, patreon.com backslash tubs the club. We've got multiple guys who hit practice posts in the discord. It doesn't, that's the type of stuff we don't share otherwise. So we got two more weeks of this, join the discord, get more stuff with football and just enjoy it while it lasts. Enjoy these, enjoy these two weeks. And then the little PTSD time we get hoping no one leaves the transfer portal. And then again, it's that desert. With that said, gentlemen, it's time. Go Vandals. Go Vandals. Go Vandals. Go Vandals.